So as some of you might recognize me, I've kind of been showing up a lot lately. My name is Amanda, and I am a recreation and horticulture therapist. I have worked in healthcare for 18 years. On October the 11th, I worked my last shift, and I have been fired. Like, like most people, I would sit in front of the TV, listening to the case counts and getting advice from Dr. Bonnie Henry, getting my daily dose of fear. But as time went on, I noticed that the recommendations from our leaders weren't making a lot of sense and left people more confused, anxious, and full of fear. I've watched that fear grow inside and outside the care home. Inside the care home, I watched my residents become socially isolated and withdrawn. I watched the fear spread and saw residents become afraid of their family and family members becoming afraid of their loved ones. There was no touching, no hugging, and eventually, no laughter, and no joy. Sorry, I lost my spot. <laughs> Thank you. The staff that I worked with are and were incredible, picking up the slack and giving even better care to their residents. And then the care home locked down Immediately, I saw some of my residents die from what I believe is a broken heart. Then the protocols started, and again, and more protocols, and more protocols. You couldn't get your footing every day. Sometimes within hours, we were getting protocols that were contradicting the previous protocols. With each protocol, I noticed the diminishment of humanity. Then the one-site rule came in, and we, like many others, became extremely short-staffed. It became common to see staff from all departments working double shifts, no days off, vacations cancelled, no sick time. This continued for months. Then November 2020 came, and the unthinkable happened. Our care home declared the COVID outbreak, and despite having a year to prepare, we were not prepared. We did not have a plan, and we did not have enough supplies. At one point, I can remember being asked to drive around Vancouver looking for hand sanitizer for eight hours. I couldn't find any for my residents. We had almost an entire year to prepare. We all knew this was coming. Why did our provincial health officer and our prime minister and our chief public health officer do nothing? What were they doing? Because they weren't preparing us in the care homes on the front lines. Things became hectic very quickly more and more protocols, limited communication, and then we had almost no staff. All in all, we had 110 residents, 99 became infected with COVID, 70 staff became infected with COVID, and in the end, 41 of my beautiful residents died, most of them alone. Officially, those residents have died of COVID, but how many were actually ca ca casualties of isolation and social withdrawal? I would say many. Despite the outcome, I am proud that I served alongside so many dedicated and loving individuals. Despite the fear, the staff showed up. The staff took on other jobs and roles that were not their own to help keep things moving as best as we could. 
We were below staffing levels and had anyone paid attention. We didn't even have enough staff in the building to meet licensing requirements. I know because one of the jobs I picked up was as a screener. I did contract COVID. I brought it home to my family. My family had various health issues and I was convinced that I had killed them because the TV told me so. But it wasn't the case. Everyone made a full recovery. Although we did have mild symptom, symptoms, the isolation was by far the worst aspect of our illness. All I could think of was my beloved residents, locked in their rooms, scared, dying alone. My anger that had been growing throughout the year exploded. When I went back to work, I questioned everything. I got limited or no answers. At one point, management even yelled at me, just follow the rules, just follow the rules, don't think. As soon as the outbreak was declared over, I quit. There is so much more, but I don't have time to get specific. I took a job at my other site and began working full time again, and it became very apparent that the pandemic wasn't going anywhere. Rules continued to change. It was like a switch was flipped. Friends fighting with friends, family not speaking to family. I watched our politicians drive us further and further apart. I have been called every name in the book, conspiracy theorist, anti-vaxxer, crazy, stupid, selfish, ignorant. My own doctor of 20 plus years told me I didn't deserve to work in healthcare because I just didn't believe in the science and so I shouldn't be there. I have even had conversations where people have told me I don't deserve to participate in society, that my children don't deserve to participate in society, and that I should do everyone a favor and just kill myself. Well, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> We might lose this battle, but we will win the war! The government should be afraid of its people, not the other way around. We are watching you. We are standing up to you. And we will be there when you lose everything and are held accountable for your actions. I am not anti-vax. I am pro-freedom. And where there is risk, there must be a choice. Stand strong, Canada. Check in with your neighbors. We need to teach the world to human again and we are the only ones that can do it. Be kind, but not the way Bonnie Henry says. <laughs> check up on your neighbors, check up on your friends, even the ones that don't want to talk to you. People are struggling and they need us. My friends, God bless you all and thank you for coming.